Good afternoon, everyone. I am the co-founder of Five Times More. My name is Katil Rebecca Abbey, and we've got Tanika here as well. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Tanika Awe, and I am the co-founder of the Five Times More campaign as well. <laughs> okay, Tanika, do you want to say how we started the Five Times More campaign? Yeah, sure. I'm happy to go into it. Um, so how did we start the Five Times More campaign? Uh, we get asked this question a lot, um, which is great. Uh, basically, I had two very, I've got two children, right? Uh, I've got a boy and a girl. I gave birth to my son three years ago and uh, my daughter is four months old. So I gave birth to her in eight slap bang in the middle of the pandemic. And, you know, basically... I say that because I had two very, very different experiences. The first time round wasn't as positive. It was um, quite a negative experience and I'll go into that. But um, the second one, despite being in the middle of the pandemic and you know a lot of anxiety and just everything going on, um, I managed to have a really, really positive birthing experience. Um, so I've got something to at least compare and contrast it to. Now, why I started Five Times More and why the my, my birth experience with my son wasn't as positive. First of all, uh, my preeclampsia was diagnosed quite late. I had all sorts happening in my pregnancy with my son, um, including sciatica, um, look, just anything you can think of, low iron, uh, I was anemic, uh, you, you name it, I had it. But um, in terms of my preeclampsia being diagnosed late, so I was showing signs of low, um, high blood pressure, sorry, from quite, I'd say midway through my pregnancy, and I had protein in my urine from then on as well. However, it wasn't until the end of my pregnancy with my son that the, uh, well, I went to a midwife appointment and, you know, the midwife was very shocked she was like look um i'm quite worried about you you're showing signs of preeclampsia you need to get over to the hospital quick don't even go home don't even go and get your hospital bag just go straight to the hospital so of course it's my first time i'm really worried um i'm you know i just don't know what to expect i've just gone to the hospital and they've said look um we need to induce you we need to get this baby out like straight away because baby's heart rate is dropping and the signs are just not looking good. So I was induced and the midwife that I had on the on the day, she told me that, right, it's going to take at least 24 hours for the hormones to kick in. So I'm there, don't so really know what to expect. I've never been through labor before, of course. So a couple of hours later, when I started feeling a few like pains, like what I now know to be contractions, obviously now I've had my second, but I was contracting a lot um, and and quite it was quite painful. So I'd asked the midwife to check me over and she refused. She said that, you know, it's probably just early, early stages of labor. You know, I, I, I was basically dismissed. Um, and this went this continued for hours. I was literally bent over double. I was in pain. I was wanting my son <laughs> I was vomiting um I was in a lot of pain I I just it was it was terrible it was awful and all throughout the midwife refused to check me she wouldn't check me um it wasn't until my waters had broke that she then checked me over and she realized that wow I was eight centimeters gone checked baby's heart rate heart rate heart rate was dropping um and then that was when the emergency button was pressed. I was rushed into the delivery room and it was just, everything was just all over the place. Um, and I feel like that could have been avoided if I was just listened to in the first place. Um, so when it came to a time to push, I actually couldn't push. I physically couldn't push because I was that tired. Um, the window for pain relief was missed. So I wasn't offered any pain relief. I literally had to, and on top of that, my son was back to back. So it was just awful it was awful right um they eventually had to use um assisted delivery they had to use um is it a fontus to help um get his head out because I, I couldn't push i was that tired i literally just couldn't push so for me that was quite a, a negative experience and i say that because again i just felt like i wasn't listened to i felt like well if you if you would have just checked me over in the first place i, I think a lot of what happened to me could have been avoided uh, and I run a mother's group called Mums and Tea for black women. 
uh, black mothers new mums we all come together and um we just have fun we go out we have social events it's a really it's, it's a lovely time right but the more i spoke to the mothers in my community the more i realized that my experience wasn't an isolated one a lot of black again felt like they weren't listened to a lot of black women the window of opportunity <laughs> Relief was missed for a lot of black women. You know, I guess for me, it, I had an assisted delivery, which isn't too bad, but a lot of other women, <laughs> emergency C-sections and, and other things that, again, are avoidable, right? They've had traumatic experiences where they, they really just don't need to have been. Um, so I say all of that to arrive to this point in 2018, the next year after I gave birth, when the Embrace report came out, I was so shocked, but I wasn't surprised because of everything that I heard before from all the other women. So what, what I did was I started doing my research, right? I was like, whoa, I've, I've never heard of this before. I didn't know this existed. How long has this been going on for? What is this? What does this mean, right? And the more I started doing my research, the more I realized that this isn't new in the health professional space. This has actually been going on for, for decades. And I'll put it into context, right? So when I was looking through the previous reports, they, they weren't called Embrace. I think they, they, they've got another name, but it's essentially the same thing. I saw that back in 1991, and I'm showing my age here, but back in 1991, when my mum gave birth to me as a black woman, she was at higher risk. But I think at the time there wasn't any previous data collected, so they couldn't say to what number, to what percentage rather. Um, and then as you look through the years and through the reports, you see that number steadily rising and going higher and higher and higher till you get to 2018 and it's five times more. And I was perplexed, I was shocked. I was like, surely this isn't, this isn't right. Black women only account for 4% of births but are five times more likely to die. I just didn't understand. So what I did, I joined forces with my beautiful co-founder here, Rebecca. She runs Prosperities, which is a social enterprise supporting black and South Asian pregnant women. And I was like, look, I've got this network. You've got these links in, with what you do. Why don't we join together? Why don't we join forces and create something to get people's attention? And, you know, let's just create a campaign and scream and shout about this because this is wrong. I have friends who are yet to give birth. I have sisters, you know, I've just had a daughter. If things are going on the way they have been, will she be 15, 20, 25 times more likely to die by the time it's time for her to give birth? You know, so that's how the campaign came about. And um, I think Rebecca's going to answer some questions on what we hope to achieve and that kind of thing. So in terms of what we would like to achieve, we want the outcomes to change, which is obvious. That's what we want to achieve. We also want to educate women and make them know their rights. We want to also educate professionals. It might sound silly, but some of the professionals that I've spoken to about the statistics, they were not, they didn't know about it. They didn't know black women five times more likely to die. They didn't know it was happening since 1991, which to me is a bit shocking as a professional when you do your training, did it not come up? Did this, what happened, what went wrong? Um, also, we would like to change the medical curriculum. And that's also to do with making more awareness. There's certain condition and complications that might look a certain way on a white woman and look very different on a black woman. How do we now train medical professionals to understand these? Even midwives as well, how do we get them to understand them? Um, student midwives, anyone who deals with um, pregnant women, they all need to be able to see the signs and know what to do. Also, we want policies to change in terms, so we know we're gonna start doing continuity of care, but how's that gonna, how's that gonna happen? If, uh, so for instance, I'm pregnant and I have a midwife, but me and the midwife don't get along, get along, but she's my midwife throughout my whole pregnancy. How do we now 
make sure that I'm safe and I feel safe. And at the, the midwife also feels safe because we also have to protect the health professional as well as the, the pregnant women. We also want to empower women. We want women to not be scared of these statistics. I talk to a lot of pregnant women and they are scared. We don't want to scare them because it is still a safe place to give birth. But how do we make them aware that it's not a scary place? London or the UK actually, is not a scary place to give birth. You know, it's one of the safest places to give birth. Also on our journey to start in five times more, we discovered, um, we came across, sorry, Things that we came across um, during our discovery. Sorry. Oh, my gosh. Cut that bit out. Um, what we discovered as part of the process were the statistics was, was not new. Like I mentioned before, we thought it started in 2018. No, it hasn't. Like Tanuki said, it just wasn't called Embrace. Um, we, we realized that a lot of women didn't know their right. So simple things like you are allowed to change your midwives. Women didn't, didn't know that. Women didn't know they can choose where to birth and how to birth. Um, I found out that a lot of women wasn't given birth options. So it was, you're gonna give birth at a hospital. They weren't told when you're at the hospital, you can have a home from home birth. You can birth in a birthing center. You can have a water birth. You can have a home birth. I think I mentioned it already. Um, they wasn't told, I wasn't told, I had, I got two boys. I was not told about, I wasn't told that I was allowed to have a water birth. Not once was it mentioned. Um, also, yeah, so that's it. Tuneke, do you want to talk about how people can get involved? Of course. So thank you for that. Um, and it's, it's weird hearing you say this about the campaign because it's like, wow, like, Five times more is actually, you know, we're doing quite a lot, which is amazing. Um, how else can people get involved, right? Um, we ask people to write to their MPs as a follow on from the petition that we launched. So just to go back, actually, let's go back a few steps. Uh, when we talk about uh, five times more and what we have already achieved, well, um, a few months ago, we actually had a petition which basically went viral. We launched it um, asking the government to improve outcomes for um, black women when it, can, when it comes to maternal health. Um, and it was, I mean, to date, we've got, I think, about 187,000 signatures. Yeah. About that, um, which is which is amazing, and we're still waiting for a um, a date for a debate from the government. Um, but again, it's just trying to increase awareness. Um, so, as a follow on from that, we ask people to write to their petition. Um, sorry, we ask people to write to their MPs because the response that we've got from the government, um, whilst they have committed to uh, research, um, which is which is amazing, very welcomed. Um, We'd, we'd like to go a step further outside of continuity of care because we believe, although it's a fantastic model, it's not the only thing and it's not immediate because that's part of their long-term plan and we want something, you know, for now. So what we ask people to do is to write to their MPs. There's a template letter on our website, which I'll give you more details about in a second. We also ask people to sign the petition. The petition is still going, so um, it's uh, improve outcomes for black women in maternal um, healthcare. Uh, we ask people to take our five times more selfie. So with the five times more selfie, again, the campaign is just about raising awareness, making sure we're having these discussions. So we literally ask people to take a selfie on social media like this with their five hands, uh, five fingers up like a stop sign um, and hashtagging 5x more so that, you know, we can highlight this statistic, but also highlight the five plus our bonus step uh, recommendations that we give to black women. Uh, well, to all women, but specifically for black women, because they are obviously the ones that are more at risk. And our six steps are number one, speak out. If you feel like something isn't right, if you feel like, you know, you, you've got questions or something, you just don't understand something, speak up, right? Um, we've got the second one, which is 
to have an advocate for you. So that's somebody who can speak up when you can't speak, basically. This could be a trusted member of your family, a friend, a partner, somebody who can literally advocate for you, who's clued up about pregnancy, labor, childbirth, who's clued up about everything. The third one we ask people to do is to seek a second opinion. As Chloe mentioned before, a lot of people don't know that they can actually change their midwife or their doctor if they feel like they're not get, getting a great standard of care or if they're just not happy with their, with their midwives. So you can ask uh, for a second opinion. The what am I on number four? Yeah. The one we ask people to do is to trust their gut. And what we mean when we say that is that actually nobody knows your body better than you. So if you feel like you're in pain, if you feel like something just quite isn't quite right, you know, trust your gut and speak up. Those two go hand in hand. The fifth one that we've got is to ask women to do their research via trusted websites. So we've got NHS, we've got NICE, we've got Patient, we've got WH. So do your research via trusted websites about pregnancy, labor, and childbirth so you know what to expect. And the sixth bonus step that we have recently added to our recommendations are document everything so that means getting the midwives and the doctors to make sure that they are documenting everything in your maternity notes and also to go a step further for the pregnant woman to make sure they're also keeping a diary of their own with their own notes of what they understand to be happening and just you know just to document everything basically so that those are our six steps we ask people to continue spreading the word and going on our website www.5xmore.com for more information where we've got information on our blog we've got information on uh, everything that we're doing basically um and also um just to go back on you know what we've done and what we've achieved we've recently actually teamed up with a positive birth company to offer black women, 100 black women every month, access to their free hypnobirthing. Again, their hypnobirthing um, outcomes really aligns with our five steps, empowering women to listen to their bodies and to So that's why we thought it was worthwhile partnering up with them to offer this service for black women. So we are definitely trying to affect change on all different levels. We're trying to affect change for women, um, the service users, you know, people like myself, people like Chloe who have been through the system, who will potentially go through it again, you know, God willing. Um, so we've got, um, you know, mothers who are helping. We're trying to help um, spread the word between the midwives, health professionals, students, doctors, whoever it is. And we're also trying to affect change at the government level. If we can get, you know, I don't know, legislation changed or we can change policy with the NHS or something like that. We're really trying to work hard to make sure that this just isn't a thing. This statistic doesn't exist anymore because I feel like enough is enough. So overall, I'm just going to sum up what Five Time More is. So Five Time More is a campaign that highlights the disparities in maternity outcomes for black women in the UK. While maternity mortality globally is quite low, in the UK, it's still a safe place to give birth. So it's still okay to give birth in the UK. Um, We came up with these statistics because of the Embrace report. So if you want to find out more, you can go on the Embrace report where you find out more details on why black women are five times more likely to die than white women. With five times more, we do not want to scare we with women. We want to empower women. And like Tanuki said, that's where we came out with our five, well, six steps now. Um, also, we want this to be a long lasting effect. So. With five times more, even if the statistics do go down to two times more or three times more, we want this to carry on. We want to still carry on raising awareness and making sure that they never go back up. You know, because it's, it's we also we say black women are five times more, but Asian women are two times more likely, and mixed ethnicity women are three times more likely. So all that still has to change. Okay, and other ways you can support us is by our social media. So we've got our website, which Tanuka said, which is www. 5xmore.com but we also got our Instagram and our Twitter which is 5xmore thank you